interesting. And I will admit people that are online. We can give it another minute, let people join. Sure. Before we get started. All right. Have you ever planned on Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Never. Just to do that once with your brother. Yeah. Yeah. If he does something, I would appreciate it. Yeah, my wife totally would not do that. It's okay. So can I do yeah, this microphone? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, everyone, and on behalf of my colleagues, welcome to this month's uh, talk from the Johns Hopkins Institute for Assured Economy seminar series co-sponsored by the Computer Science Department, the Whiting School of Engineering. Each month, we'll have a talk on research topics at the intersection of assurance and autonomy. This seminar will be recorded. Today's speaker is Tianmen Shu. Dr. Tianmen Shu is an assistant professor at the Department of Computer Science at Johns Hopkins University. He also holds a secondary appointment with the Department of Cognitive Science at JHU. His research goal is to advance human-centered AI by engineering human-level machine social intelligence to build socially intelligent systems that can understand, reason about, and interact with humans in real-world settings. His work received multiple awards, including the Outstanding Paper Award at ACL 2024 and the 2017 Cognitive Science Society Computational Modeling Prize in Perception and Action. His research has also been covered by multiple media outlets, such as New Scientist, Science News, and Venture Beat. He received his PhD degree from UCLA in 2019. Before joining JHU, he was a research scientist at uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, studying with uh, Josh Tenenbaum and Antonio Corral. In today's talk, Kevin will address engineering human level machine theory of mind. Welcome, Kevin. Over to you. Yeah, thank you for the introduction and such welcome here. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm very kind of excited to talk about this topic, uh, particularly in uh, today's kind of uh, era where we have very powerful AI system. And you will know this AI system will be uh, able to help you uh, in very broad range of uh, tasks. So um, maybe in the future, we'll have what? Uh, five years ago, we, we think we're going to have uh, drivers or uh, automated drivers. We don't have that yet. Um, but um, in the future, we want to have not only drivers, uh, AI drivers, but also AI assistants, coders, companions, or even teachers uh, that can help you uh, in many, many different kinds of tasks. Um, now, I, I see future, future a lot because I don't think we are there yet. Um, so let me just uh, uh, we talk about what is the kind of fundamental missing ingredients uh, that prevent us from having those kind of assistance. Um, so um, that, this is a cover issue, a cover of uh, issue in uh, last year. So you look at uh, magazine. Um, can you see this uh, picture clearly? Um, do you know what, what's going on here? Um, I see uh, that is you you left. Uh, what 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 do you left? Well, it looks like. Uh, maybe somebody with writer's block has a, a robot offering to help, and the robot helps in a very different way than expected. Yes, yes, yeah, okay. Um, so if you are working on the voice side, uh, to, to build a robot that can build a kind of uh, paper tower, that's, that is also an assault. And if you solve this problem, you think your job is done, actually, no. Uh, you have to also understand what people want and really help people in the same, same way that uh, they want to be helped. Um, so this is uh, showing the importance of really understand what people want. Um, and um, now we have some kind of system that, uh, in theory, does understand what people want. Let's say Alexa, for example. Um, you know, most of us, or maybe everyone on us, uh, use a voice assistant nowadays. So what, what does Alexa do? Alexa can listen to your voice, voice commands and try to help you uh, with simple tasks. Uh, you can also imagine that people have working on this um, uh, for you know, employing version of Alexa. So this is like a CCAS system built by uh, Google a couple years ago. 
where they can also listen to your voice commands and try to help you with difficult tasks. Now, if you were building this system, it's amazing, but I don't think this is the same way that people can help each other. Um, so, for example, if I show you this image, right, you, you will understand that this person probably need help. And not only this person need help, they need help as soon as possible, based on the box on the top is going to fall very soon. Um, but if you if you have Alexa or like a CCAS system, they don't really understand that uh, you know this person need help uh, right away. So there's certainly some gap. Um, however, while currently a system um, have trouble with understanding what people want or whether or not person need help and how you can help this person, even um, 18 months old child can actually do this. So this is studied by Wolf and Tom Salo uh, in 2006. Um, they could comparing the helping behavior in human infants and young children. So the first video is uh, uh, 18 months old child. Um, maybe some of you have watched this video before. Um, so this child has never encountered this situation, situation before. Um, but you can see that, um, you can recognize that um, the adult needs this object. I pick this object up and hand it over to uh, the adult. <laughs> um, it is very amazing because if you compare the language skill of this, this, uh, this child with the language model, it's, it's zero to infinite because this, this child doesn't understand language yet. Uh, however, you can do the kind of thing that uh, a language model cannot do. Um, this, in the same study, compare this with uh, young chimpanzee. You can, it's a very similar situation, uh, but it's much more frustrating for you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> all right, so what we can uh, learn from this uh, one study, we learn that there are two key abilities of human social intelligence. Um, the ability to understand are people, you need to understand why this adult need help, uh, and what kind of uh, difficulty this adult has in reaching uh, this goal. Um, you also understand uh, how to interact with other people based on your understanding about other people. Um, so these are also, also the two key building blocks I want to build for machine social intelligence. Um, the ability to understand our people, which is what we we'll study, uh, what we we'll talk about today, uh, theory of mind reasoning. But that's not enough. Um, based on your understanding about other people's minds, you also need to cooperate with other people, uh, to work with people and also to help people. Um, so there's crucially a very close connection between these two. All right, so first of all, what is theory of mind? Um, for people here, raise your hand if you have heard about theory of mind. All right, so, um, so there you are here. Okay, so I have, uh, I have some co conversation with uh, people from different fields, from cognitive science, from civic psychology, um, from um, machine learning. So people have different kinds of understanding about what theory of mind really is. Um, so I'm going to show you my understanding. Um, so um, I'm going to show you this one image. Um, raise your hand if you think the person on the right hand side is trying to help the person on the left hand side. All right, so this is probably the most <laughs> reproducible human study I have ever run in my life. Uh, I've done this for over a thousand people, only two reasons in their hand. Those two people were sitting in the back in a very big uh, auditorium room, so they could not see this image clearly. Um, so what we what would happen if we ask this question uh, to before? What do people think that, you know, the person on the right hand side is prepared to be helping um, by holding a chair? Well, it's actually amazing that they can generate this kind of capture in the first place, but it's not really correct. So it does correctly recognize the uh, action, which is holding a chair, but it incorrectly infers the, the intent, which is helping. Um, so I want to show you the fact that understanding humans doesn't really mean you only want to recognize humans' actions. That's not enough. You want to recognize why people engage in certain activities, what cause people to do certain actions. And that's, that's the, really the, the kind of fundamental um, meaning of theory of minds. So theory of minds um, is this ability to reason about hidden mental variables, such as person's goal and mood, that drive observable actions that you as a third person watching this person, uh, or watching this human, you can observe these actions. Um, so for example, in order to understand why this is not helping, you could look at the person on the left hand side first, um, so the, the goal of the person is to try to sit down and believe that the chair, the chair was not moved. Um, and this is a false belief because it's not really consistent with the actual physical state. 
uh, this false belief is caused by the person on the right hand side. So if you do understand this, um, the mental state of this person and how that mental state uh, was uh, influenced by the person on the right hand side, you cannot understand if, uh, whether or not it's helping you for uh, playing the plan. Um, so I about what the is. Yeah. So, so this is maybe um, I, I don't know if this is a terribly helpful question or not, but I, I do find I do find in interacting with the, the the language models that a lot of times I have to break it down in pieces. Yes. And so I do wonder if you showed it just what was going on on the left and just yeah. what was going on on the right separately before you asked it to put it together, whether or not one might get a different answer. I haven't tried that. Although we did actually build a model that do center all as uh, components of the uh, reasoning model um, itself. We are, well, let's not solve the other problem for you. And, but, but then you still need uh, um, a kind of explicit reasoning over the kind of out output from the language model. Mm -hmm. um, and recognizing uh, actions, for example, for individual person, right? That's yeah. something we can use a language model, well, the model model version of language model. Yeah, because if you look at the one on the left, you can kind of you can kind of tell that they're falling. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, at least a, a human can. So I wonder. I do wonder if it would pick up on that. And the one on the left, uh, the chair is very close to them. It looks like they, you know. Yeah. So. All right. Um, we will we'll talk about. More yeah. Of that. Okay. Uh, but I think you got the uh, the right kind of intuition. Yeah. Um. All right. So. Um, there are many people um, are trying to like, uh, evaluate uh, whether or not a language model can understand their minds. And there are many, many people in recent years. Um, and the, all of these, almost all of these uh, studies um, are based on this one classic experiment that people have done in the 80s. It's called Sadian and test. Um, recently, if you have you uh, seen this before? Oh, that's cool. Okay. Um, so second test, what is second test? Um, you have two people. Uh, this is Sally, this is Ed. All right. Um, all right. Sally has a ball and uh, she puts it in her basket. Um, Sally goes out for a walk. Uh, while Sally uh, is away, and takes the ball out of the basket. Um, then um, put it to the box. Um, now Sally comes back. The question is, uh, if Sally wants to play with the ball, where will Sally look for the ball? Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, raise a hand if you do choose basket. Okay, All right. uh, raise a hand if you choose um, the box. Okay, I see no uh, box, I, I, at least I'm lucky. I don't know about the... Uh, the chat. So if you if you if you if you have any uh anyone on the on Zoom will choose box, um, please type. I was actually very interesting to to learn about the uh, how you think about this. Um, but okay. So um, so a uh, very young young children can understand uh these situations and they will choose um the basket. And uh, the reason why you would choose basket is because you can recognize that Sally has a belief that's not consistent with the actual physical state. Uh, we call this false belief, right? Now, this is a very crucial aspect of the theorem mind. However, one of the misconceptions in machine learning is that people think this, this, this D ability of their mind. If you pass this, you have theorem mind. But that's not, that's not true at all. And I'll show you why it's not true. Uh, but before that, I also want to uh, kind of point out one of the facts I want, I want to mention a lot in my talk, which is you can look at these images, this cartoon and understand what's going on. You can look at the captions, uh, and understand what's going on. You can look at, listen to my speech and try to uh, understand what's going on. You can look at all of the, the in, uh, information, all of different kind of modalities and understand what's going on. And often time, if you look at those image and captions, uh, also listen to my narrative, it help you to understand it easier. So we have this ability to uh, fuse different kind of information from different uh, uh, sources or different kind of modalities to form a kind of coherent mental picture of a person. Um, now, this, okay, so we can do this. I can use study and uh, test to create a question as a benchmarks for machine learning. So this is from other people's work. And this is the, the most common work in machine learning nowadays. 
So it's essentially just setting a task. You change the name uh, to James and Abby in this case. You change the location to rooms or like a, a box, and you choose to change the, the, the ball to, to pen. So it's, but logically speaking, it's the exact same situation. And you ask people, you know, where where this uh, where James will uh, think Abby will make work pen. Um, so um, and if you and to them, if you saw this, uh, it, it shows that model has different. Based on the issue, if you want to build a robot that can help people, right? No one's gonna write this very clearly and very short text to test robots whether or not uh, uh, you, what we think this person can do uh, next. Uh, the robot has none of this information provided to, to it. What robot has is raw sensor input. You have video, you have audio, you have sometimes you can listen to people's speech, like they talk to each other or talk to robots. And jointly use all of these continuous uh, uh, information uh, you know, uh, sent to the robots, you need to decide uh, whether or not I need to help them and how I can help them. So there's a very big gap between this kind of uh, very simple task-based kind of uh, theory evaluation, a question and answer kind of evaluation, um, and uh, to, to, to kind of real work with the uh, robot can really understand people's minds and probably. So um, uh, you have seen simple uh, modality where you only have very simple task. Um, you have very simple scenarios compared to real world, where right? you have very small space space, you have very short actions. Um, and also, um, you can only focus on belief inference, false belief inference. But in the real world, we need to understand other aspects of human mental space, such as goals. Um, so in my work, I focus on a very different kind of uh, paradigm for data minds. Um, the one I call it embodied multi-model data mind. So what do I mean by that? So, First, we need to be able to form a coherent mental picture of others based on body model inputs, not just simple tags, but also video, speech, and, and, and other things. We need to have the ability to, uh, to kind of observe uh, complex human behavior in dynamic and real world environments um, using only your partial observation. Why? Because if you think about like in body agent like robots, your robot only has a partial observation. So there's a lot of things that robot cannot observe, and you need to be able to use your reasoning to fill in gaps. Um, and lastly, you also need to be able to do quantity kind of theory my reasoning. Uh, quantity means that you only need to want your mental state reasoning to the physical task you want to perform, uh, to the physical context and also social context. Um, and the kind of reasoning of outcome to be able to support better decision making, let's say, support how you can better plan your actions to help people. Uh, but I'll talk about all of this uh, in the talk. Um, but first I want to begin with how we can uh, form a coherent kind of mental picture of others based on body model inputs. Um, so in recent work with my students, we propose this uh, different kind of evaluation for theory of mind. We call this uh, uh, multi-model theory of mind question answering. So you have a video of a person's uh, behavior in the uh, household simulation. Um, we can also provide kind of text description of the environment and also the activity of the person. Um, then we can show either the video or the text of both of the video and text to a model and ask the same model to ask, uh, answer the question based on different uh, inputs uh, about this person's mental state. All right, so um, from different kind of modalities, you can get uh, complementary information. So this is an example. Um, from video, what you can see, you can see Emily, uh, the, pers the, the person in the, in the video, uh, Emily walked by a one glass, but did not pick it up, right? You walk by a one glass showing the, in the first, first frame, um, and go straight towards the, uh, the cabinet open, and try to open the cabinet. Uh, this is very easy, to, you can very easily see this uh, in the video, but it's very hard to describe this in the text. Why? Because you have so many objects in the real world, you pass by all these objects, it's ridiculous to describe all the objects that the person did pass by but did not pick up. Um, no one will do that. Um, all right. However, from test you do get additional information. Like say, uh, you don't actually know uh, what's inside the microwave, right? Because, um, well, it's um, an object occluded by the microwave it's inside the microwave. Um, you cannot see that from video, but from test I can provide this thing, additional information. I, say, I tell you that in the microwave, um, you have a cupcake. Right, so you got this additional information about states from the text. Um, now, based on now, you can kind of try to form, um, try to fuse all, all these complementary information together from different modalities 
And all of these will help you to better understand what's going on inside this person's mind. Um, all right, I'll, I'll give a specific example down the line. Um, okay, so now we, uh, we kind of uh, create two types of uh, inference, uh, go inference um, and belief inference. Um, and, and to remind you, uh, people usually don't even consider go inference as part of uh, their mind invention for some reason. Um, so I'm going to show you one example here. Uh, it's about a belief inference. Um, so I don't know if you can see the uh, text, I'm just going to just uh, read it out. Um, so you have a uh, um, state description in here. Uh, it tells you that there are two cupcakes inside my body, uh, which is located in the, the kitchen. So I, I'm kind of uh, uh, removing also the redundant cap here. Um, and in the living room, there's a cabinet. Uh, and inside cabinets, there's a bag of chips and other objects. But crucially, there are no cupcakes inside the cabinet. Right? So you have uh, Cupcakes inside the microwave, but not in the cabinet. What do you have in the cabinet? Well, you have a bag of chips and all our objects. Um, the action is Jennifer right now is head towards uh, the cabinet and is open, about to open it. All right. Um, now, let me ask you this question. If Jennifer has been trying to get a cupcake, which of the following statements more likely to be true? Uh, a, Jennifer thinks that there is a cupcake inside the cabinet. Uh, B, Jennifer thinks that there is a cupcake inside the cabinet. Uh, which, um, show your hand if you want to choose um, A. Uh, let me maybe first ask a question. Show your hand if you don't understand what's going on right now. Okay. Um, I, was, I, I see, yeah. So, so I'm sorry, I, I didn't, I, I was going to ask you to repeat the question. Uh, show your hand if you don't understand what's going on in, the, in this situation. Should should who understand? Or? You. Oh, do I? Yes, yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to, to make sure. Okay. Now, show hand. No, don't want to show your hands. Uh, for A or what about B? Show your hand if you want to choose B. Um, show your hand if you want to choose B, and not because I show it in the green color. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay. So um, we have several people who uh, did not show their hands. Do you have any other uh, ideas or? Um, anyone? No? Okay, all right. Um, so, all right. So, if you count the, uh, so most of the people will choose uh, B, uh, now you choose A, uh, now you did not understand the question, and, and, and <laughs> some of you did not uh, raise your hand. Uh, okay. Um, this is a uh, really false answer, uh, A, and it, give, it gives you a very clear explanation. Um, so there's no mention of cupcakes uh, inside the, uh, the cupcake, but it, it, it did mention that uh, uh, you know, it was a bag of chips. Uh, so it suggests that Jennifer does not think he has a cupcake inside of the cabinet. Hmm. Um, it's not really, not really where she should think uh, in this case. Um, so you cannot equate the, uh, the, the physical words, uh, the, the true word states um, with the, um, the belief inside um, Jennifer's mind. All right, so, uh, Okay, so we want to do this uh, in uh, more uh, complicated situations closer to real world scenarios. Um, so what we did is uh, we built this uh, simulation called virtual home social or virtual home 2.0. Uh, in this uh, simulation, we can simulate household environments, um, different kind of apartments. We can put multiple agents in these apartments and simulate how they can interact with sort of objects and also interact with each other. Right. With this kind of platform, we can simulate uh, we can city generate a lot of human activities. Right? So we can sample different apartments, we can sample different goals for, for, for the agents. Then we can use the planet to generate agents' actions, uh, and then you can use the, the, this platform to render the video frames, but also it gets one choose as physical state um, and also one choose human actions. Right. Um, we can, based on the one choose, right, we can keep uh, maintaining uh, kind of a list of possible goals. Uh, and uh, uh, beliefs for the person at each time step. Um, and then uh, in the end, we're going to choose two opposing hypotheses. One is more likely to be true, the other is more likely, uh, is, is less likely to be true. Um, then, based on both the quantum state and action, and also the hypothesis we choose, uh, we can use Lang model to generate the, uh, the text portion of the data set, but also the question and the mm -hmm. options. All right. So uh, with this, we can basically generate a lot of uh, text 
uh, candidate samples. We can also use this platform to simulate um, to generate a proper training data. Um, crucially, I don't want to create training QAs for a model because that's that that's in my mind a cheating because you're already seeing example QAs. What I want to want the model to learn is to be able to watch how people act in this household environment and, and really understand how people update their mental state uh, to pursuing their goals um, in this environment. So what we, what we generate instead is uh, uh, thousands kind of precisionally synthesized videos of uh, Human household activities, so just people doing things in the house. Uh, we can provide a lot of functions and location, like say people's uh, goals and beliefs, and also all the other uh, visual information. All right. Um, so that's the uh, the best part. So how do uh, people and model perform? So we have a uh, human study tested on uh, close to two hundred participants uh, on the test set, and um, so what we found is that. People answer the question most accurately when they have access to both modalities, um, and particularly when they have both access to the access both to the video and text. Uh, the majority of the participants will pick the correct answer, so they will reach a consensus, which which agree with the conscious answer. Um, the dashed line here is the, uh, the the chance, just random guess. All right. So now we also have evaluated large learning models and large body model models. Uh, some other people also call it body model like large learning models. Um, so you have large models that can only look at text. You also have uh, multi models models uh, that can look at both the video and, and the text. Um, so now this model uh, crucially passed the, the random chance part. Uh, they, they perform uh, randomly. Uh, particularly for GP4, it makes uh, Basically, just purely random guess for goal inference. Um, we did uh, also uh, have a, a preliminary test uh, testing for O1, which is uh, only uh, released last week. Um, it's preliminary because they have uh, 50 pounds, uh, probably kind of a limit, so we cannot set it on the for their set yet. But based on what we have test, um, so first of all, O1 is the test only model, so you cannot test it on multi model model yet. Um, and O1, uh, the best uh, recently uh, model for OpenAI, uh, have not been able to uh, solve the problem yet. Uh, it does improve the belief inference a lot um, to the point that it, it really makes mistakes. So that's actually very impressive. The, the problem is what uh, jumps on the going inference to a point is almost 0%. Um, I, I need to look more into this because it makes very Weird kind of uh, inference. I can show you an example at the end of the talk if, if it has more time. Um, for now, I, I think we, we need to do more testing, but based on the preliminary results, yes, improvements in all one, but um, not a lot. Um, and not like say for all, all aspects of men's data, at, at least. Um, and right now, it doesn't really understand a video yet, so uh, maybe in future they can improve that as well. All right, so there's also some recent work that try to improve the pumping. Uh, for your minds, kind of uh, related to what uh, Jim uh, suggested, but but not not exactly. So basically, you just you still use that model to generate generate the answer, but you you give it like a better kind of pump. So for example, symbolic pump that that's a, that's the process that try to filter out a lot of information in the text in a very long text, so that you can make pump shorter and make it easier for that model to answer. Um, that that is the only kind of base that we found that actually can improve. Uh, the lunch model performance over and, and really get over the uh, random chance line. Um, but again, this is only improved uh, lunch model, so you cannot really use it for model model for you. Mm -hmm. um, so the obvious question is there's very large gap between a uh, model, uh, like a machine to your mind and human to your mind. So, how we can bridge this gap to engineer human level machine to your mind? Um, the, the kind of uh, key lesson I learned from the work. Uh, is that to, to build how you level which is your mind, it means that it has to be fitted grounded. It has to be model based, uh, multi model. And not only you want to try to build zero mind, you have to also support downstream tasks, particularly cooperation. Um, so I'll show what I mean by critically grounded first. Um, so zero mind is actually crucially not just about social behavior of people, or understand people, but also you need to understand physics um, first. So uh, let me show you this animation, right? So it, the, you can understand that go on these agents to try to reach the, uh, the blue diamond, maximizing its rewards, minimizing cost by taking most efficient actions, uh, subject to physical constraints. 
If you don't understand physics, you don't understand the concept of constraints, you don't understand the concept of you don't understand the concept of efficiency, uh, then you don't understand the concept why this person take take this particular path to reach this goal. Um, so uh, what, really what we need, and this is not why uh, this is a, a kind of also certified cognitive scientist, um, that the, the reason why people can understand uh, how people, how other people act in the physical world. Uh, is that we have this uh, journey model in our minds. And this journey model tells us how the physical world works and how agents act in this, this physical, physical world. And we can use the journey model to conduct model-based reasoning or like causal reasoning. Um, so, all right, so then uh, how do we actually uh, uh, implement a, a kind of model-based inference for machine theory minds? Um, so first we need to have a journey model. Um, the most simple version of this joint model is a joint model of single agent assembly. Um, so you have a world model at bottom. Um, people have to understand how the world works before you can take action. Um, you also have minor set of these agents. Um, let's just say you only consider go and believe at the moment. Uh, so based on your understanding about the world, based on your mental state, you can then make actions, um, make plans to reach your goal. All right, so this is a, it's probably the least simplest kind of uh, um, agent model and world model we can do. Um, and one way to formulate this is to use partially observable block of this process. Uh, reason have you don't do not know what quantity is. All right, all, everyone, everyone knows, oh, one, one person. Okay, I'm just gonna like highlight the key concepts. So um, you have a world model, which which can be formulated as stationary same probabilities. Um, so you, you click, even your current state, you take action, you might imagine what will be the future state. Um, you have your mental states, um, at the moment, let's just consider belief um, and go. So belief is a distribution of the states because you don't really know what physical, actual physical state is. Um, and then you have um, a rule function that depends on your own goal and also the cause of your actions. Um, then your behavior can be modeled as a planning point, uh, in which case you're gonna uh, try to maximize your future return uh, or, or cumulative reward in the future. All right, so how we can use this uh, uh, journey model for model-based theorem reason? Well, uh, okay, so think about now you are you're, you're robots, you're watching humans' actions. Now you want to recover the human mental state that caused you to human actions. Um, so the robot itself is a level one uh, agent model. You have your own belief, and now your belief will be about this person's mental state. So you're gonna use a, a kind of lower level agent model to uh, approximate human behavior and using this uh, level one, a level, level, level eight, zero agent model to try to infer, to recover human's mental state based on observed action of this person. Um, and there's a type of approach we can use uh, to conduct this, this type of model-based uh, reasoning. Uh, it's called Bayesian inverse planning. Um, the, the, the kind of uh, uh, inference problem is, given the observed action of the person and observe the physical state, you want to recover this person's goal and view. Right. So how we do this? We use a kind of general model to reason, given a hypothesis about this person's goal and belief, right? what would be a kind of a reasonable action uh, taken by this person that will be consistent with the hypothesis about go and belief, right? But the most usual term will be the first one, which is uh, this action likelihood uh, produced by the down zero agent model. But, um, any question about all this? All right. So, um, all right. So we have used this to uh, uh, solve the problem, the theorem of reason problem in the domain. Uh, or both like a simple action, a simple animation, but also a uh, real world videos. Um, but the question now here is that sometimes you don't just have video, or sometimes you don't even have video at all, you have text. Um, so how you can actually uh, conduct facial inverse, inverse planning on multiple uh, modalities. But also um, in, in, the, in the previous case, we also have only a very simple scenarios. So how you can scale this up to more like a more real world like kind of environments. Um, so, uh, so in the end, uh, we need uh, knowledge about physics. We need uh, a model, a general model of physical world and agent behavior. Uh, I also need to fuse information from multiple inputs to conduct all these uh, um, uh, model-based inference. 
Um, so I'm going to show kind of a reasonable way with, with this. Uh, where we uh, propose this uh, method called uh, out or bit uh, inverse planning accelerated by language model. Um, so the, the first thing we want to do uh, is to extract some useful representations from different methods and then fuse them together in the uniform kind of format. Um, so we have videos. Um, so let's say you have RGBD videos of a person's behavior in a household member. What we can do is that for each of the frame can uh, extract uh, like a state repetition, uh, specifically we use singular. Um, singular is a repetition that's very common in computation, but not, but also increasing popular in the bodies. Um, and if you don't know single graph, um, so each node on this graph uh, represents entity. An entity could be object or person. And edge connecting two nodes represents spatial relationship between two entities. So if I'm holding my laptop, uh, there's going to be an edge telling you that uh, there's a relationship holding uh, between me and my laptop. Um, or, so you have the state annotations. You also have the actions um, you can have it from the, the videos. Um, for a text, you can also use language models to generate similar kind of symbolic representations. So um, you have discussion about the, the environment that can give you a predicate um, similar to the thing graph representation, telling you where these objects are, what, what are these objects' states. Um, you also can guess uh, people's actions from the text. You also can pass the questions, options into a hypothetical clause and hypothetical belief of a person. I can do this uh, using a language model. All right, so then you can fuse these uh, symbolic representations from videos and text get together to get uh, uh, unified kind of representations uh, for different methods. Um, I'm going to show you one example um, how you can do this fusion and what kind of additional benefit you can get from this fusion. Um, so, from text, you can get information that you cannot see from video, let's say, uh, what are the objects inside the cabinet, what are the objects inside the fridge. Uh, which are occluded by the cabinet and fridge. Um, but that only gives you initial state. Uh, for a video, you can easily get uh, people's actions, but also how that action changes the physical state. Right? So for example, if you see this person at uh, T, uh, if you want, like, uh, test that one, uh, opens the fridge, uh, then you, see, you know that the fridge, uh, state of the fridge nodes, uh, it changed from closed to open which you usually cannot get from text. Uh, so by fusing these uh, different information together, then you can get a full picture about the, the state at each time step. All right. Uh, okay, so now you get uh, symbolic representation from different uh, modalities. What you can do with this? Uh, we're gonna use uh, inverse planning. Um, so the same kind of basic inverse planning uh, method I, I told you about. Now, uh, by showing this equation again, right? Um, of course, you can just do this in a traditional way. Uh, and it will be a traditional way. Traditional way will be you use um, kind of hand design planner to solve this planning problem, to guess the actual likelihood. Right? So, given basically, you're going to solve the pump theory problem within this recently uh, method. Um, now, it, it's very hard to solve a pump problem uh, if you have tried to solve a pump problem, uh, when you have a very large state space and action space, uh, basically in the real world. Um, so, and then you not only you not only need to do this uh, do this once you need to do this for every hypothesis about the goals and belief that is not possible to do in the real world. Uh, so what we do what we want to do here is that we want to accelerate this process um, a lot and also get, um, in many cases get rid of this uh, reliance on um, hand design kind of planner that only works on one domain. Um, so what we do is that we can use the next model. Uh, to estimate the actual likelihood. Landmark cannot answer the question accurately, but it does give us some kind of reasonable actual likelihood. It will give you a pump, uh, will give a condition about the goal, belief, hypothesis, and physical state. Um, so we can pump Landmark with hypothetical, hypothetical uh, belief, and, and also the physical state we have observed, um, and asking it to estimate the, uh, the likelihood of observed actions. Um, we can do this using precision model, but you can try to improve this using the synthetic behavior data we generated um, in, in the benchmark. So we, you remember we have uh, some of the videos of uh, people's behavior in the house. You can use that to create these uh, training samples uh, to further fine tune a lens model, uh, uh, and then uh, kind of adapt to this kind of behavior that I typically see in a household environment. 
Um, okay, so with this, uh, so we, we still use patient and inverse piling, but uh, we, we use benchmark as a component, estimate action like a group. With this, we, then we can simply outperform every single baseline um, based on the probability result, uh, including O1, um, and uh, kind of try to approach the uh, human level performance. There's still a gap, and then it's about uh, how we can further bridge that gap between the current mass and the human uh, in the um, so one thing also I want to mention that we we can also uh, use the uh, kind of prediction model, a very small prediction model like GPJ or Lama, which only has seventy or eighty kind of uh, parameters. Um, and with this kind of prediction, very small model, yeah, it, it still can significantly outperform GPJ four, which is a much larger model. Um, all right, so this is a, a kind of follow up work where we only not only have single agent behavior but also social interaction between people. Where you can, for example, have a person talk to um, another person and say, "Hey, have you seen the vaccine?" Um, and, and the person can reply, "It's in cabinets uh, in the bedroom, right?" And you see this: the first person actually goes to uh, the cabinet in the bedroom, opens it, but did not find anything uh, in in the, in the cabinet and closes it, right? And you can ask questions like, "Say, um, you know, if if Jennifer actually knows um, there isn't anything in the cabinet, uh, which one of the is more likely to be true?" Jennifer is trying to help Kevin, or Jennifer is trying to pin the Kevin. Um, anyway, so you can do this, uh, and you can ask questions about a social relationship, um, and uh, um, use the similar approach to solve this uh, problem, uh, where you need to infer uh, individual person's uh, mental state, but also how they think about each other. Um, so the idea is still the same. You use that model as a uh, body agent planner to uh, as mean action like a group and also utterance like a group because now you also can talk with each other. Um, but we have multiple uh, levels of recursive reasoning um, and you can uh, try to do so uh, also with the lens model, um, but not, uh, uh, not in a cheap way. Um, okay, I don't have much time to talk about this, so I want to try to wrap up uh, very soon. Um, so uh, the kind of uh, basic uh, result is still um, Current uh, model -like models cannot solve the problem, um, and um, we can try to uh, bridge the gap. We, so our approach is the only end, um, and it can try to bridge the gap between uh, human and uh, um, machine theory. Um, there is still a gap between even our model and human uh, theory minds. One of the crucial kind of failure is that if we recognize actions wrong, now they, now how we don't have the ability to, to kind of uh, correct that at action recognition. Or if we recognize an object wrong, we cannot uh, correct that, uh, that mistakes uh, made in the lower level virtual perception path. So in the current about uh, work, we also try to bridge the, the, the gap between 3D perception and uh, inverse planning, um, where you can kind of use your high level reasoning to uh, correct your mistakes in the lower level perception path. Um, so, okay, so key, key takeaway. Um, Learning model, model, model models, uh, nowadays they cannot, uh, alone cannot achieve uh, human level theorem reasoning. Um, however, we can combine them with spatial inverse planning um, to take advantage of the robotics of uh, spatial inverse planning and also the scalability and the generality of the language models. Um, I want to use maybe like uh, two minutes uh, to very quickly talk about some of the uh, recent work we, we did where we use that theory of mind to, to improve human cooperation, uh, human AI cooperation, uh, which really uh, reflects this uh, study in the, uh, the 2006 uh, paper. All right, so uh, the first thing we do is basically mimicking the kind of behavior of 18 months old child. Um, you have no verbal communication, but you have visions uh, of these uh, person's uh, actions. Uh, use that visual inputs, you want to infer the goal of the person and try to help this person. Uh, we, we kind of propose the body assistant benchmark where we basically replicate the same kind of setup. You have a manager and try to do something, and that can be a different kind of household task. And they can help agents that need to infer manager's actions first, then help manager to, sorry, infer manager's goal first and help agent to reach the goal faster. Um, so the major is humans, help agents AI. Um, and you can evaluate uh, the performance by using speed up. So you can see how long will it take the agent alone to perform a task, and how long will it take both agents working together to perform a task. Comparing the lens, you can get a speed up. Um, so we did this uh, also by using our agent model. 
So in this case, not only you need to have a belief about the person's mental state, but also based on that belief, you need to do a planning. And planning will be a joint planning, in which case you can imagine human's action and how you can uh, divide your own action, basically robot's action, to coordinate with human's action. Um, okay, so I'm going to just skip all of this. Um, and um, to show uh, kind of what one way the result is. So actually, I'm going to skip all of this. Uh, if there's a question, I can go back uh, in the end. Um, and in more recently, you also uh, include verbal communication into the framework. Uh, in which case, not only can you infer a personal mental state from video, but also from um, the, the kind of verbal communication, basically language component um, in, your, in your inputs. Uh, and not only can provide physical action to help person, but also can uh, verbally communicate with the person. Um, so let's say if you want to set up the data table, there are questions like say, okay, I don't even know where the places uh, are. Can you tell me where they are? Um, so we we try this very, uh, I would say, in your specific approach, where we use language model as a component to generate message and also generate actions together, all, all based on language model, to try to control an agent to help a person. Um, it doesn't, it performs well if the language model already knows the, the person's goal. But it doesn't perform well if you have to also infer the goal, uh, which in retrospect is uh, clear because uh, well, it's uh, obvious because then well, doesn't really understand goal inference yet. Um, and it also generates a lot of redundant messages like say, hey Alice, I found the water glass in the kitchen cabinet. Hey Alice, I found another water glass in the kitchen cabinet. I want another glass because it just goes on. Uh, uh, but what we really want is to have explicit mental reasoning. Uh, to optimize your communication explicitly. So what, we, what I mean by that, if you imagine like the best kind of optimal uh, scenario, uh, human and robots share the same mind. They know exactly uh, what each other is thinking about. So you then you also should have a shared joint plan in both human and robot's mind. Um, there's no misalignment. Of course, that's not really a true uh, scenario in the real world. In the real world, however, you can try to understand each other's mental state, right? You can, a human can try to understand robot, robot can try to understand human. But obviously, there's going to be a misalignment. So the kind of uh, so our idea is that you can use verbal communication as an action um, to try to minimize that uh, misalignment, right? So if, if for example, if I know something more than you, and I think you need that critical information for your planning. Um, then I can use my verbal communication to tell you that piece of information to align your mental state with me, right? Um, so, uh, and then once you have the kind of reasoning, then you can use GG4 as, as a tool to translate that mental reasoning to natural language to communicate with human. All right. Um, again, I don't have much detail, so, but I'm, I'm kind of uh, happy to talk more uh, offline about how we actually can do this. Now, but I want to show just quickly what happened here. So we have a human study where we ask people to read the uh, uh, perception of uh, the human's perception of uh, helper agents uh, on different criteria. So one means uh, strongly disagree with a certain uh, statement about, about its AI helper. Seven means strongly agree. So um, the, the, the green line is the language model agent. Uh, the red line is our approach. So you can see that language model talks the most. Uh, but it's not really helpful message at all, uh, which is kind of uh, consistent with the example I showed earlier. Um, all right, so main takeaway, um, to model based to your mind, uh, it kind of enhanced symbolic cooperation in two ways. So it can help you to better physically assist a human. Um, it also can generate verbal communication grounded to the mental state research. And particularly verbal communication that can align the two minds. Um, and showing kind of the mind also enhanced people's subjective perception of a robot. Um, all right, so I think I'm just gonna uh, skip all this uh, uh, pull-out work um, with some cool uh, models, uh, but not so cool yet, robot uh, demos. Um, so, um, and I think, um, yeah, so I'm just gonna do a very quick summary. So, um, so I talked about two key building blocks of, of machine social intelligence. Um, I talk about uh, what, what do I mean by human level machine theory, uh, sorry, human level machine theorem. 
and how you can actually uh, improve cooperation between human and robot. Um, and particularly, uh, all of this will rely on a kind of journey model of, um, of uh, agent and words, um, which can serve like a foundation for machine learning. All right, so with that, I want to uh, thank you again, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Kim. This is a beautiful talk. Um, I think we've probably got the ability to, to do a Q&A from there. Yeah, we've got a couple of questions online. Um, does anybody in the room want to start off with one before I go? We can go back and forth. All right, we'll start online. Oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I just had a question about uh, sort of the, the notion of intuitive physics and how it sort of factors into these models, yeah. um, particularly how these models represent the state of the world. Um, yeah. Is it sort of just tracking like all of the objects or does it have a sort of representation of what well, objects are actually like pertinent to the like task or to yeah. the, you know, like how does it represent kind of constraints of like humans in the environment and also like uh, constraints in terms of estimating physics, like I'm just kind of curious about this. Yeah, so um, so at the moment, uh, it, it, it tracks all the objects you can see uh, from in the video or, or, or the text. Um, but I think that's that you 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 bring out a very important uh, point. People don't track keep track of all the objects you can see in the world. Um, and by kind of uh, focusing on the on only the part that's necessary for your task, um, you can make it a lot e uh, kind of easier or more efficient to do that. We try to do this a little bit in the communication part. So uh, in the communication, we need to decide what kind of information will be relevant to a person uh, that we need to communicate with waste that person about like, uh, information. Like say, um, there's, uh, there's a, there's a uh, cup on the table. I don't think the person knows where this cup is. And also I think the person actually needs to find this uh, cup. Now I need to communicate that information with the person. Uh, we did a little bit uh, about that uh, for the communication, but I think you, 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 you can mention a very critical point. For every kind of, uh, for any kind of plan or reason problem, you, need, you do need to focus on the rather part. So there's a question online. Um, first one is asking, is there a scale of connection slash reasoning, like 18 months old, three-year-old, 10-year-old, friends for 20 years? Um, scale of, like, like what kind of, it's kind of developmental trajectory for 18 months old, uh, from 18 months old to like an older. Is that, is that a question? Or... Uh, Kevin, do you want to unmute? I can. Yeah, sure. So is there like some, some way to gauge, hey, this system operates at a scale of an 18 month old. This one is um, capable of connecting with the person at a, you know, like they've been friends for 20 years kind of thing. Some way to kind of have a, a metric to easily be able to say, this is how well it performs. The, okay, so this is a pretty much like a, a, a question that the developer psychology have been asking in the, in the, in the, for, for decades. Um, and there's some clear answer, there's some unclear answer. Yeah. Like for example, we know that uh, I think if I remember correctly, um, by three months old, people, uh, like infants, can understand the concept of goal preferences. So they know people have uh, goal oriented actions, and they have different preferences for different kinds of goals. Right? So like some people like apples more than oranges, for example. Um, and by eighteen months old, like obviously, you can try to help people, but you cannot do verbal communication. Uh, there was some debate about uh, uh, false belief capacity. So originally, people think. Uh, so they use test study and test for fourth belief uh, evaluation. I, I think they, they found that people only like uh, by four years old, they can do this. But more recent thinking is that to pass study and test, you not only you need to be uh, fourth belief reasoning, but also other irrelevant kind of uh, abilities. So actually they, they kind of uh, put this uh, a lot earlier than uh, four years old right now. Um, so what I'm trying to say uh, probably is that there's, uh, there's uh, a wealth of uh, knowledge in this uh, developmental psychology studies, and I think uh, there are some um, some somewhat clear answer about kind of developmental trajectories for a, a baby, and maybe that can give us ideas about what are the kind of key abilities that should be should emerge uh, from machine model first, or like what kind of learning um, experiences you should uh, uh, again, force a language uh, model, force a machine model to acquire first, that can help you to develop a positive. Uh, knowledge or uh, skills data as like a foundation. Yeah. I have a question. Um, 
you already mentioned this, but I'm, I'm curious if you could speak a little more. Uh, in the in the boxes that you have there, there is no concept of information because when there is a concept of information, there's ambiguity. Language, uh, I like the idea that you're thinking multimodal, but each mode of data As brings a, ambiguity in a different way. Yes. And the ambiguity is not the same. The ambiguity that we have in language is not the same as what we have in from images or video yes. or other modes. Uh, how do you think about the ambiguity of the information? Right. So I, I would like to treat all of this ambiguity in, in a uh, four patients framework. I, I give you. I can give you one example. So I didn't mention this earlier, but we do have a global experiment where we have people talking to the robots using speech. So in the in the earlier example, I show you communication. Right? In that case, we don't have speech. We we assume you have perfect transcript with no noise. But you do have a noise in the speech recognition. How you can deal with that? Um, so in that case, I can show you this screen. Um, sorry. Right. So um, I just want. Okay. So you have multiple terms for this kind of final reason on where you have the speech uh, from well audio. Um, you have the actions. You can observe from human. You have physical space, also from videos. Uh, then jointly you need to infer what this person wants the robot to do, right? You have a voice command from this person through the speech. But you also have additional information from other modalities. Mm -hmm. uh, you can you can if you have explicit terms in your vision inference, you know exactly which terms uh, depend uh, for each one term, what kind of information you uh, you need to get for that term. And you can, hence, you can kind of uh, um, identify source of uncertainty uh, back to each one of these terms, right? So, for example, you have a speech term, right? You you, you think, okay, based on the concept, uh, context, I think people want to make breakfast, uh, and, and this person wants to make breakfast, and probably they need milk, and they are trying to find the milk. So the instruction probably is about milk. Right. Then you can say, okay, if that's really the instruction, basically the go for the robot, what would be the likelihood for actually hear that uh, voice command and say, try to okay, get milk for me? Um, then if, if you have a certainty of noise or um, errors, you can identify that noise or certainty or errors back to that term specifically and help you to debug. If you make a mistake online, which part of this uh, facial inference uh, is wrong? Well, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if you do the whole patient treatment, even though each of the terms you have uh, a certainty, in the end, you do can use other part of the thing to kind of try to overcome the uncertainty in that term. Yeah, thanks. Uh, this this looks great. Uh, I think we can talk later. But I'm also curious about uh, something that we say now. Let's say we have a phrase that we use now. Yeah. It should have meant something different 20 years ago. In our culture, yeah. and it would probably mean something something different in different cultures. Yeah, uh, that's also the kind of ambiguity I'm thinking about. But uh, yeah. we can. I'm, I'd love to talk to you more. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I, so coming at this from the robotic side, um, you know, I think we might think about this as less uh, a set of uh, probabilities of transitions between states, and more of a constraint model. So, so something where I understand my system design and I understand that in order to take a picture, I have to take the camera lens off. In order to take the camera lens off, I have to power the whole system up. And so I'm, I'm kind of curious, you know, how, what's the intersection here between, you know, is the constraint model kind of an underlying sort of set of hidden states that you're inferring from behaviors and the behaved states are the observables? Uh, uh, can you help me think about this? Right. Um, I, I, I'd say, so theorem is like, um, um, you're introducing human into, in, into an equation, right? Yeah. Um, so let's, let's, let, let's do a, a single thing. So uh, do not consider human yet, right? So robot has part of the vision. You want to figure out the key and state, as you say. So you probably do this a lot in your, in your homework. Uh, now you want to put human in, in, the, in the equation, now you also have hidden state for human, you have to estimate in order to cooperate with a human, right? And that's, that would be the mental state of the human. Uh, because you do, well, um, assuming you have perfect 
observation of human actions and, and, and speech and everything. Mm -hmm. That's still not enough, right? Because you don't know what this person actually is thinking about, what he actually wants. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the thing to say that, uh, that still my reasoning is trying to guess. Based on whatever kind of available information you can guess from the activity. So, so, so in a way that, you know, the key piece here is who knows what, right? So, so I, I kind of think again, sort of, so for example, in a lot of failure modes yeah. of uh, expert teams working to each, with each other, you know, one of the failure modes is different members of the team have a different understanding of what's going on, a classic thing in a pot, you know, a cockpit, yeah. right? You know, one pilot is troubleshooting one engine, the other thinks the other engine is the problem. So, so it, it seems like that. In the theory of mind, uh, you know, there's an information theoretic piece of this. Yeah, yes, indeed, that's information. So let me just go to this part. I will show you very quickly, um, which I hope I should talk about more. Um, uh -huh. you know, so um, you have, right. So um, so let's say you, you, you imagine like a simple scenario, like uh, in a household scenario, but maybe not like a, the team of you, you are working yeah. on. Um, at least say let's let's set up a dinner table for, for my for our guests. Ah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Bob say okay. Well, three you give me right. Uh, but actually, he one one guest is not coming, and you as the uh, AI is observing this behavior, you know the fact that Alice did not mention this. Uh, very good fact to Bob. Then you can detect this misunderstanding uh, in Bob's mind, and then it can help you to yeah. maybe the AI system will suggest like, hey, Alice, maybe you should tell this to Bob. Or, 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 hey, Bob. We actually only have two guests coming. Um, would that is that something uh, more on the line? Yeah, that is very much. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know we're over time. There's one more question online, um, and well, since those are our people, I think we're fine. But uh, one more question online said: Have you given any thought into how we can accurately test the AI's understanding of motives? Motives are already not readily apparent during human-to-human -human interaction. Uh, motives of human. How how we can accurately test the AI's understanding of motives? AI's understanding of motives. Oh, okay, <laughs> um, so that's um, you mean like a human's motive, right? Not AI's uh, motive. Oh, okay. If um, I mean the person who asked is still online. I don't know if you want right. to unmute. Oh, you unmuted, but it looks like you muted again. Um, so. I, I can try to answer this, I guess, based on what I understand. Okay, so well, I, I think, I, so I did mention a lot of the, the question answer evaluator, right? I think it's a kind of intermediate step that you can use to evaluate the my reasoning. But I think in the end, um, your goal is really to, um, to understand human mental states well enough so you can support the kind of uh, uh, activity that people want to do, right? So if the kind of motive is not relevant to your support, it doesn't really make sense for you to try to try very hard to understand that part um, for, for solving that problem. Uh, let's say, I, mean, I don't know, human has very hard motive in some cases, and you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't necessarily need to spend a whole resource trying to solve that problem right now for AI, uh, I mean. Um, and second, if, if you understand that motive well enough, the critical motive well enough for the test, then we, we should just just evaluate test performance. Uh, instead of uh, treating that motive evaluation as uh, like a like final kind of evaluation, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. We, we can, however, use motive evaluation as a debugging kind of step. Like say something something will happen when uh, this cooperation, right, or, or human AI teamwork. Um, I can try to debug and say, do, does this ASS actually outstand the motive for this specific context at all, right? So I think it's more like a debugging work and not like a final evaluation. They said that makes sense. So I think you answered their question. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Gavin. Let's thank our speaker one more time. And the meeting starting right now.